And with Islam, I think a lot of people are concerned, particularly with immigration, that what happened in your school is is happening on a, on a wider scale in yes. the country. And look, you put your foot down, but nobody else is going to. Is that something that we should be concerned about across the UK? Yes. <laughs> um, the thing is, I think people don't realise how important schools are and how important children are. Children are the future of any country. And look, the immigration point stands, it's true. I think that immigration needs to be reformed in whatever way. I don't think anyone is arguing, or very few people are arguing for no immigration. They just want reduced immigration. They th mm. think there's been too much. And from and different places, more specialised immigration as well. Yes, uh, people, yes. Well, they who want love people the who, who, who share our values. Yeah. But what people always miss out on is that many of these people who hate the country, they're homegrown, right? Mm. They were born in this country, they were raised in this country, and they were raised in our schools. And what nobody realizes is the schools are teaching them to think like this. Because if you keep telling people that they are oppressed, that the establishment is against them, if you don't inculcate them in singing God Save the King and loving their country, if you don't teach them a chronological arc of British history, which belongs to them, if, on the other hand, you divide them up into various different groups and say, you're the oppressed minority of gay kids, you're the mm -hmm. oppressed minority of black kids, you're the oppressed minority of Muslim kids, because it's not just, you know, people think, oh, but it's just Muslim immigrants. That is not the case. And in fact, I would argue that there are many Muslim immigrants who are, you know, freshly here, who are very supportive of Britain. Mm -hmm. Look at the homegrown kids of a variety of colors, white kids, brown kids, black kids, all different types who have been made to think this way because of how we are instructing them. And we understand that this is happening at university. We get that. Well, why do we think it's happening so easily at university? Because it's already been done at school, right? But nobody thinks about school. You know, uh, nobody cares about teachers. And that's partly because I think everybody's been to school. I also think that historically it's a it's a female um, mm -hmm. profession, so everybody thinks it's so hard to become a pilot because there's only five percent of pilots that are female or something, whereas most of them are male. And historically, it's always been male. When in fact, all you need is a high school diploma to yeah. become a pilot, and it's actually pretty. You know, it it's feels easier to me. Pilot's huh. easier to me than teacher. You teacher, go, hell. Oh my goodness. But you say hell because you think, oh my God, it's work. hellish. I think but, work. I oh, think I paper. See. I think marking. I think yes. kids not listening to you. Yes, but let low me tell pay. You. Yes, often. but you're saying. That yes, that's what people think. You don't realize how intellectually demanding it is. Oh, yeah. you don't realize how smart and clever you need to be to be an excellent teacher. How and it's not just because you need to be knowledgeable about your subject. In, in order to keep thirty s plates spinning at the same time, knowing each kid well, knowing your subject, being able to deliver it in a way that's engaging, being able to respond to those questions, it is a skill that is so hard to develop. Nobody respects it. Everybody just thinks anyone can teach. This is wrong, okay? It's just wrong. It may be that we have a system that allows anyone to teach, but the fact is, to do that job well, you have to be super, super talented. And we don't care about our schools. And I know people on the left will say, well, it's only about resources. Look, obviously, it's always nice to have more money. But the fact of the matter is, it's about the ideas. It's about the values. It's about what we think is important to be doing with our children. And at the moment, the way society is set up, in order for a school to be successful, the head teacher and the staff have to be brave enough to say, I'm going to reject what's going on out there. I don't care who hates me. I'm going to do what's right for my kids. That is, If that's our system, if our system for 24,000 schools in the country is to say to everybody, okay, we need 24,000 head teachers who are willing to take their life into their hands, to have everyone hate them, to be abused on Twitter and so on in order to stand up for what's right for their kids. If that's the system we've got, I can tell you, you're never going to find 24,000 people who are willing to do that. And most people have a mortgage. They want to walk their dog and take the kids to school. That's what they want. And they want to be left alone, which is why they put black boxes up on Instagram because they just want to be accepted. We are group animals, you know? Unfortunately, for a school to do well, we need people who are happy not to be group animals, who are happy to step outside that box and say, to hell with all of you, what's more important are my kids. Yeah. Most people just aren't able to do that. Looking good versus actually doing good. If I have kids in the future, right, they'll, they'll probably be quite sort of middle class if this podcast still does all right mm -hmm. and, and sort of white or whatever. Should I send them to Michaela? Absolutely. Yeah. I tell everybody, you got to get your kids to Michaela. You know, oh gosh, 
it's such a great place. I mean, yeah. and I, I would say to all your listeners, come and visit us. You just have to sign up on the website. Ooh. You can have lunch with the kids. You can have a tour with the kids. You know, you'll see why we've had over 7,000 visitors come and see us in the last 10 wow. years. People from across the world. Peter Bogosian. Yeah. He was, he was like, I was in London with him. We went out for dinner and he was just like foaming at the mouth talking about Michaela. <laughs> you've got to go there. Get Catherine on. I was like, I'm going to speak to Catherine. Get her on. No, no, but you've got to go there. And I was like, yeah, I will. I haven't, you know. No, I, but I, I, I he's right. I should go. I you should need go. to come. No, yeah. because, and the thing is what I'd also say is you need to see what other schools are like. Because especially mm -hmm. if you've been to private school yourself mm -hmm. and so on, you have a certain idea in your head of what schools are like. And also that was then, this is now. Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, some of the private schools, the things that they're teaching, I can tell you of one London day school that has abandoned all teaching of Shakespeare and instead what? teaches, yep, they've abandoned all Shakespeare and instead they teach the great works of the drag queen Panty Bliss. Shut up. I'm telling you. What school's that? I'm not telling you. What do you mean? Why not? That should be public. They should be shamed into teaching can't. Shakespeare not, again. I know, but they're my, they're my it, colleagues. It's a private school. Of, um, well, there's loads St. of Paul's. them. You're never going oh, to get not it one out of the, me. It's not one of the ones. The <laughs> oh, no, you'll Paul's have heard Westminster. of it that I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> uh, no, Merchant, Stop Merchant guessing. Taylor's. Stop guessing. Just I'm wink not telling once. No. Like make a drag queen face. I don't know what that is, a drag queen face. Bloody hell. That's insane. That's And the other thing with the private schools now, firstly, they're getting rid of the taxes situation aren't they they're sort of taxing them more and they already i mean from when i was a kid my, my family never they sent me to a private school they would never be able to now not in a million years it's yeah. like twice the three it's times so the price. it's ridiculous and then that probably that must i mean it was already a bit that way when i was younger but it must create this total different society where you're like the rest of the world is alien to you you wouldn't be able to talk to someone who didn't you know th that that kind of wealth is mad i know and you know they're actually by doing the vat thing they're going to gain 1.6 billion in comparison to the 116 billion that we spend every year. So 1.6 in comparison mm. to 116 billion. Like, what is that? That's a, a vote, drop in the ocean. It's a vote winner, isn't it? And then this is it. Well, I think, I don't really know. I don't know. I don't actually think, I, no, I disagree. I don't think it's a vote winner. I think when the Tories talk about the politics of envy, and while I really don't like the Tories at, at all at the moment, and I don't necessarily agree with much of the, what they're saying, that is one thing I do agree with. Envy. Uh, the, it, there's something ingrained. And, well, it, what, so what does that mean? It's not fair. It's not fair that some children get this and some children don't. And um, that unfairness uh, tends to motivate a lot of people on the left. So I'd say more conservative-minded people value other things. Jonathan Haidt is really good on this in his book, The Righteous Mind, where he talks about the idea of um, things being sacred, like the flag or the family or your faith. That is very much a conservative point of view. Those things are sacred. Burning the flag offends a conservative. Burning the flag to a leftist doesn't care. Hmm. But the leftist, because they see things through equality and fairness mainly, anything that isn't equal this is the thing to fight against if it's not fair. Whereas when I'm sort of saying, who cares about white men? Who cares about X, Y, and Z? Who cares about the history? You know, I mean, we want to learn the history, but you've got your cards and you want to deal with them, deal them. I'm not thinking in this way, but it's not fair. Because you see what they're, just to explain when you were saying, well, 99% of people aren't racist. Yeah, no, you're right. But the thing is, what, what the leftist is thinking in that moment is, but you don't understand that if you come from a white middle-class family, you've inherited certain things. You've inherited wealth. You've inherited a, a, a school, you know, mm. you, like you've educated, a, you've got a certain education. Yeah. Um, you've well, had as certain as aunts black, and uncles. As would a black middle-class family. Uh, or an Asian middle-class family. Yeah, but nowhere near, it wouldn't go so many generations. Yeah, okay. And you wouldn't have so many. You might just have, you might be the exception. So you wouldn't have all the aunts and the uncles and the cousins and so on. You wouldn't have all the ways of being. It would be that your parent uh, made it and, and changed things for yeah. you. But that's and still the case for a lot of white white people as that's well. That's the case, but we're talking about that. There are particular families that have generations and generations of wealth, but, but so yes, many but, don't. I mean, not even generations, generations, but... Hmm. 
They, what they're saying is it's not fair. That's what they're saying. And they'll, but I presume they'll also argue the same thing for the white working class kid as well. You know, like I'm, I don't think that they're just arguing for black and brown people, are they? I mean, I don't know actually. Well, that that tends to be the issue. Is it's oh really? And then you point out, I think you know, you look at those lists of children at free school meals, free school where you know there's some of the poorest schools. Yeah, 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 the, yeah. The white yeah. kids perform worse. Yes, along with and they black won't Caribbean. accept that. Uh, they they don't look at those things. No, that was published in the, tele the Telegraph, which is a bit right leaning. And so they don't recognise that white working class kids obviously have a hard deal. That's the problem. Yeah, that's the problem. There was that great book, Hillbilly El Elegy, by J.D. Vance yes. in the U.S. Great. Yeah, yeah, made great. that point about the mm. forgotten working class white people. Yes. I think that's what's yes, caused I, a lot of. Yes, in America, I just thought in this country. No, why, no? Well, I don't know. A lot of white working class feel left behind in the woke. Yes, like, but I always thought that that was more about the, the tons of immigration uh, that nobody is recognizing how that's had an impact on their societies. So, you know, the kind of Tommy Robinson's mm -hmm, of this world, mm -hmm. where he's saying, look, I've been shouting about this for years and years. Um, you know, uh, my, my community's under threat. I don't feel like he's saying, oh, why isn't the woke ideology taking us, you know, uh, including us? No, I think he'd be more on your side about Let's just get rid of the woke ideology. I yes. had this debate with David Badil. We had this debate too. Sort of he's that. He's that. Jews don't count. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh, we want to be victims too. I had this whole conversation. I mean, with it's him. Just crazy. We were going back and forward with each other, and he was saying that, and I said, no, no. But doesn't the fact that they've missed out the Jews show you that this is a flawed ideology to start with? And let's get rid of it. I think. I mean, you're absolutely right. Life's not fair sometimes, and you just have to deal with the because the 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 other the alternative is to implement policies that are authoritarian. That's the only way that you make everyone start from the beginning. You say to someone who's done really, really well in their life, okay, but you can't make your kids do well because of how well you've done. You've got to be authoritarian. And that leads to far worse things than just being unfair. I think that's the issue. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I want to ask as well. So when this whole stuff with Islam was going on, your face was plastered all over all the newspapers, TV channels, yes. BBC, big Daily, Daily Mail, everywhere. And you're in a very public battle with, of all different communities it could have been, Islam. Were you not petrified? Yes. What did it feel like? Well, we have a permanent security guard now at the school. We never used to. Well, that's no good when you're at home. Um, yeah, no, it's... Uh, and one security guard, I mean, Salman Rushdie had a security guard, yeah. I think. They, yeah. took, they took like 20 seconds. I don't want to have a go because it's a hard job, but it took like 20 seconds to get over to him. Mm. When they, oh, I don't want to make you more scared, but bloody hell. I know. How does that feel today? Like, even just coming here, I'm thinking, fuck, Catherine's coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is worrying. I mean, look... Um, I don't know. Are you a very brave person? It seems like it. Well, I'm that or a bit mad. Yeah, I think I that mean, as well. <laughs> the thing is, in the moment, I feel like I need to do the right thing. You know, whenever I'm faced with whatever the situation is, each time I think, well, I need to do the right thing, don't I? You know, that's my duty. Um, so, but yeah, it is worrying. And it's worrying that we live in a society where we're all terrified to say what's right and do what's right. Um, that the, yeah, where uh, David Badil is wrong is that when I think about how successful the Jewish communities across the world have been over the centuries, they didn't do that by claiming to be victims. You know, they they turned up in New York and those women just became seam seamstresses and just work like hell. You know, like they just like that. That is what they they've always done. Like this is I've always thought. Um, you know, the various Jewish communities for ethnic minorities that we should learn from them, you know, because they've they've done so well. Um, so I think David Badil's position is actually harmful to Jewish people because that's crazy. You don't want to embrace your wokeness. Wokeness is going to ruin you as a community. Um, the best way to make something of your life is to work hard, be kind. That's our motto at, at school. And to... Uh, keep on going when they pick you up. And mm -hmm. my assembly uh, this morning was exactly that. You know, They knock you down, pick you up, you pick yourself up, keep on going. That's always been the way in which um, uh, people have succeeded. Mm -hmm. And uh, sadly, in the last 20 years or so, we maybe a bit longer, this victimhood mentality has taken over. Um, and we're not helping anybody, you know? We're not helping uh, the poor white kids up north. We're not helping the black kids in the inner cities, you know? We're not helping anyone, uh, apart from ourselves. 
you know? How do you feel you were portrayed by the media? Like the average person who doesn't really know too much about the story, do they see you as a sort of savior of freedom or, or sort of a right-wing fringe person? They see me as both. It depends on who it is. Uh, people who are worried about what's happening to the country and want um, multiculturalism to succeed and uh, have more old-fashioned traditional values when it comes to raising children, uh, 100% they're behind me. Uh, those who see everything through the prism of victimhood and who want people to be divided into these different categories uh, really hate me. Um, uh, the, the most hate I get is from the white left. Um, I find the black left, for the most part, leaves me alone. Um, I think that they look at what I've achieved and say, you know what, we may not like things she's saying, but you got to respect her. You know, hmm. uh, Lee Jasper, who was Ken Livingstone's uh, advisory man, he worked with former the mayor, mayor many, yeah, long For time. Oh, Ken Livingstone was the former mayor, yeah, Labour, um, and uh, he's a great supporter of mine. You know, despite being, I mean, he called himself a Marxist, he's very much a leftist, um, black man. Uh, there's, there, there are a number of them who are like that. Um, uh, but that's because they really respect what I've achieved that, or they just leave us alone. Mm. So they just, they don't say anything and, um, they just keep quiet. The white left on the other hand, come for me with a vengeance. Um, and I think that's because they feel I owe them, you know, they feel they own me. And that's where, when you say 99% of people aren't racist, it's true, not in any overt way, but I don't think these white leftists, they're not racist in any kind of like um a, you know vicious way they're not putting excrement through people's doors and things like that but they do think in a way that is un is unhealthy and race is involved in there you know they look at me and go how dare you? you 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 should know your place you should you should vote on the left you should think in a leftist way and they get really annoyed about the fact that i think differently and i think that entirely has to do with my skin color i think toby young when he was setting up his school at the same time as me is a big c conservative i'm a small c conservative they never had protests outside his school. Hmm. They never treated him in the way that they treat me. They didn't stand amongst his uh, parent evenings where there were all these black mums in Brixton trying to find out about our school and all these white people had been bussed in from outside of London to sit amongst the black the black, the black black mums and shout at us to drown us out so that the black mums couldn't hear what we were saying. You know, like that. Wow. Exactly. It's a little, it reminds me a little bit of sometimes where that, that woke side, how they are with like on the gender spectrum of the gender stuff, how they are with jk rowling a lot of men maybe yes. ricky gervais myself like we've had cancellations and things like that but it's not the same vitriol that exactly. is aimed at women exactly yeah. and that's where you see that's where the right needs to give some um space to the idea of sexism and racism and so on because they do exist and that's where the left is correct when they say this stuff exists. It's just that it's more difficult to pinpoint. Yeah. It's more fluid. Yeah. And th these are examples. Unconscious bias. It's just that like you're the it's guys that got it. It's you're the, the ones telling us about unconscious bias, well, the ones who are unconscious bias. Yeah. Well, no, I, I think that exists on the right as well. I wouldn't say it that does. it doesn't. It, it, it does. exists in all of us. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, everybody has unconscious bias to some extent. That's true. And that we all need to, when I'm hiring a teacher, I think to myself, do I think he has presence just because he's tall? Mm. Do I think he has presence just because he sounds a bit posh? Is he handsome enough? It, 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 like, <laughs> well, no, but that's true also. Really? really? You know, no, oh, yeah, I there is beauty think, bias. You're is right. Is he just this good looking, posh guy who's tall? Is that why I think he has presence? Mm. No, you're absolutely right. And, and so I have to check myself to make sure that when I'm hiring somebody, I'm actually hiring the best person for the job and that I'm not misjudging him yeah. because of those unconscious biases. Mm. They exist on the right and the left.